Hey everybody, Leslie Schreiner here. This is my little Scraggle Muffin Wrigley. His head's getting awfully shaggy and he needs his clipper work done. We got a show coming up in a few weeks. So, have to do a little bit of work on him so he can start to look like what we want. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do so he's got a really long layer here on the top of his head. Incidentally, if you're gonna start trying to learn how to rotate a coat, that uh, working on the head is a good place to start because you can get layers pretty quickly. The head hair grows fast, and so you can get practice working with layers and seeing what happens. And you're, you know, uh, putting a hole in won't won't make such a huge difference. So what I like to do for the head, there's a couple different tools I might use. I might use a, a fine stripper. Um, if I'm just learning and even, I'm not just learning, but I still, I use one of these stones, um, really, really good for, for uh, gripping and, and plucking the hair out. So it's going to take a, little bit of time. He's got a nice layer coming in underneath and three weeks he'll have a nice bit of hair on his top of his head. Three or four weeks I'm hoping to get him to a show. Yeah. Best thing to do is pull just a little at a time. You know if you're stripping the hair and your dog's real fussy, giving you a hard time about it. It might be that they're just being a pill about it, but it might be that you're going too fast for them or that uh, you're taking too much hair at a time, especially if they're a young dog like him. He doesn't have a lot of um, experience. And if we get in a hurry and we're just trying to get to the end of the work, we're not really you know, making space for how he feels about it or if some areas are more sensitive than others. It's not the nicest or the most fair. So try and take our time there. I'm gonna leave a little bit this immediately behind the eyebrow right here. I might want some of that when I go to trim the, the face furnishings later. Yeah. Just push it up against the grain. That makes it easy to grab part of it and then you pull back with the grain. When you're stripping the coat, you're always pulling in the direction of the lay of the coat. It's a lot easier for the dog to handle. Now I would probably, once I had this dog in show condition, so if I get him in the ring in the next three or four weeks, then at least every couple of weeks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address the head. And if there's some hair that's long enough, I'll pull it. Um, this is a place where on show dogs, a lot of people inadvertently break the coat and they lose the salt and pepper of the head hair and they get a solid gray and in the ring that makes the coat look soft, whether it is or not. Um, the hair on the head is generally softer than the hair on the body. And it's a way that you can, if you are careful about stripping this, and if you don't have tools, you can also do it with your fingers. I've got a little ear powder here. And if I put that on there, it makes the hair really grippy and then I can pull it with my fingers, just my fingers. It's a good way to get a nice strong thumb muscle. Anyway, this area right here in the center, if it doesn't have a layer growing in and the head hair gets too long, that's a place where if you go too fast or too aggressively, you can leave a bald spot might get a little irritated or even a little 
a little pink down to the skin there. It goes away. It's not, it's not a huge issue unless, you know, you're about to go in the ring or something. Um, but it just, it just is a sign of, of moving a little too aggressively, pulling a little too hard. And come over to this side. Works a little easier for me. And then holding him firmly, but gently. As I oh, got a little bit of sap in his hair. That part pulled easy. <laughs> okay. And the other reason I'm addressing pulling the head hair he really needs a lot of clipper work done, but I don't want to do any clipper work until I've, I've pulled most of the hair that might potentially be in the, in the way of getting clippered. You know, if I were to clipper this area on up into here where the, the head jacket is before I pulled the hair, it'll cut the hard coat and it'll grow back in softer and more solidly black. And that line, the transition line between your stripped work and your clipper work will just slowly start to drift up. You'll have less and less coat, hard coat to strip. And over time, while you're learning to uh, rotate the coat, that can be an area that you find, a thing that you find in your transition areas that uh, you're getting softer coat with, a, with the wrong colors moving in. A little bit on the top of his eyebrow here. Okay. So that's not all of it. I still have this area and this area that I'll come back to, but I, I did most of the work. And I'm gonna strip, ideally you're stripping down to this bone that's right here, the zygomatic arch. It's like the upper cheekbone. And you want that in a schnauzer to be pretty flat. And that's a place where I like to strip, I have good heads, and so I like to strip all the way down to that, maybe even a little past it, and then when I clipper it, I can clipper the line exactly where I want it. And I'll always have Nice pepper salt growing in there. Always have nice pepper salt hair growing in. Okay, same thing on this side. I'm gonna get a little more of this off. And I'm pulling faster here, but I'm really pulling just only a few hairs at a time because otherwise right there, that's a kind of sensitive spot and he would understandably get pissy with me. Okay, now I can start to address some of this clipper work. And again, I start with broad strokes first and I do detail toward the end, I know still kind of new for you about the clipping. You don't like it too much. It's noisy. Oh, the pen blade is not working. Let's try a different one. I'd rather not use a 15, but I could in a pen. Okay, so I'm going to lift him up, and the place I start is I pull all the face hair forward, and basically if it's long enough to hang down, that's probably about where I'm going to be clippering to. There's a whisker right here, on the, and that can be a, a, guiding, a guiding point. Again, we'll, we'll trim everything up more specifically when we get a little closer to done. I don't want to come down too far here. There's a dent right there. I don't want to carve that out. I want to wait. That's a finishing touch. Okay. 
and I don't want to come too far to the sides because this is an area that I'm going to be stripping later to help this lay really flat. If I clipper it or use the thinning shears on it now, then it'll be soft. It'll grow back in soft and it will be hard to blend. So again, I pull the long hair forward and I'm, I'm roughly making a line from the corner of the mouth up to the corner of the eye. Again, I'll get the finishing touches afterwards. Now I'm just trying to do the, the main real estate. Stay with the grain while you're doing your rough draft. That's what I call it when I'm doing the beginning of the clippering before I get to the final stages. I call it a rough draft. Okay, and on this side, we're doing the rough draft. I can't see exactly the fine points of what I want to do until I get just this excess hair off. But I want to be careful and not, <laughs> not cut away hair that I am going to want or need or that will take, you know, months to grow back. So I want to be, be careful with that. I'm going to take a little bit more right here. There's, a, there's where that bone is. I don't want to do anything to highlight that. I want that to, to be nice and flat looking so that the head comes off the flat of the head and it comes straight down right there. All right. Next is the ears. I like to use a 15 and a 30. That was a 10 I used on the face and the neck. Now, before I do the ears, this is another place where the, that transition line for the stripped coat can creep up on you. So I'm gonna lightly strip that first before I clipper so that even if I clip, I clipper into that area a little bit, there will be some hard coat growing in. Um, the head hair takes four to six weeks to sprout and grow in, depending on how fast that particular dog's coat grows. The nicer that you can show the salt and pepper in the head, it really does help highlight the good coat on your dog. And it's another place where if you are not mindful of it and you just clipper it, um, clipper the ears too far or uh, don't strip some of this hair out or you break the coat while you're stripping it, you can inadvertently make your dog look like its coat is not as good as it is actually. And over the years, I have just found that the judges do appreciate seeing the nice salt and pepper hair on the top of the head. So try to go for that if you can. It's always easier to learn how to strip uh, and groom standard schnauzers if you have one with a hard coat. This guy's got just about the hardest coat that I could ask for. It's really lovely. All right, now I've stripped along that transition line so I can clip her. Now I'm going to clipper the ear and I want to hold it loosely. It's tempting to pull the ear out, but then I'm going to make the clipper mark here. And then when I release the ear, the clipper mark is now up this up, up on the head. So if I, if I just lay the clipper, it's hard to see how to help you see this. If I just hold the ear and lay the clipper without pulling the ear, then the clipper line can really fit along that contour of the head and the ear where they come together. But if I pull the ear to make it flat or easier to clipper or whatever, I will have a tendency then if I put the clipper down to clipper too far up the head. So then when I let go of the ear, now my clipper line is artificially high and it changes the look of, 
of the of the head of the skull. I know, Wiggly. He says, that's loud and it's near my ears. So I'm gonna hug his head kind of close to my body and just do it a little at a time for him so he can be successful. I don't wanna get in an argument with him. There we go. And I'm staying with the lay of the, of the ear, lay of the hair, and I'm laying the ear flat across my fingers so I have a flat surface to clipper, and that's how I make sure I don't clipper the ear leather. Okay, that's the top. And now I have the back of the, the bell of the ear to do. And again, I don't want to cut into the neck, so I'm going to be conservative. I can always trim it up more later, especially closer to the show. All right, now we're going to do the other ear. I know, Ridley. I know. It's okay. It says, I would skip this part. I know. I know. I know. No. Good boy. I want to give him some feedback that jerking his head is not good. I don't want to be too assertive about it at this point. But, you know, if he jerks his ear, that's how he's going to get hurt. So I'm definitely going to tell him I don't, I don't want that. Don't do that. Come around to this side and... Do the back of the bell. All right, and now I'm gonna do the inside of the ear. You can do that with a 15 or this is a 30, so it's gonna be nice and tight. And again, I'm folding the ear so it's flat against my fingers because I'm going to lay the clipper blade clipper down on top of my fingers. I'm sorry, I have a hard time getting that in the camera. From the base to the tip. From the base to the tip. I'm going to... i got some hair growing out of the ear, ear canal here. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to clipper what I can of it. If it's real bad, I might go back and pluck it. But for now, we're just, like I said, it's a rough draft. Now, I could clipper this hair, and ultimately I will trim it, but it's a place I can just lightly pluck and get a few more hairs to pull so I can get some nice salt and pepper coat right up to the base of the ear. Good boy, thank you. Your dog's cooperating, thank them. They don't have to. Sometimes we make up, we're entitled to it. And we're not. It's a relationship, the grooming relationship. It's like any other relationship. It's two-way street. I gotta keep him safe, so he needs to do what I want him to do. But I'm going to be real careful to be gentle so that he can learn that I know what I'm doing and that this is safe. All right. Now, some of this can pull a little bit more. And I could trim that last bit with straight scissors, but I prefer to do it with thinning shears. to get a little bit nicer finish. It doesn't look quite so hard and unnatural. Okay. And on this side, so hold up the ear. Turn that long hair. Now, I'm going to push his ears forward, lower his head so maybe you can see, push his ears forward, and this little bit of hair right here that's sticking out, I'm going to trim 
trim that or strip it because I want that ultimately to lay flat and I want the dog, I want it to lay flat while the dog is looking forward as an alert, okay? We'll trim the outside edges with straight scissors real carefully. Now he's got all this, this bushy stuff in between his eyes. So just to get started, I'm gonna lightly thinner right down the middle to make a little a little aisle. And I'm not gonna be aggressive with it because I also still want some salt and pepper hair growing there too. So I'm gonna thin some of it and I'm gonna pull some of it and I'm gonna thin some of it and I'm gonna pull some of it. The thinning makes it so there's not as much to pull at one time and also makes it so that uh, it's not all growing in at the same time. You want to stagger it. That's that's the whole part of um, rotating the coat is staggering what you pull so, so you're not all or nothing. You're always pulling a little bit. So there's always some more coming back in. And since I'm not sure ultimately what this this uh, fuzzy bit on the top is gonna be doing. This is the first time I'm really getting his head ready. So I don't wanna be too aggressive. I just wanna pluck it a little at a time to make sure I don't accidentally, in creating the eyebrows, accidentally change something that's gonna take me literally months to grow back out. This guy's about 10 months old. And he's been groomed before, but Never really um, meticulously, because he hasn't been shown yet. I've groomed it to keep it, keep him in good shape and and to give him some practice, but not more than that. All right, now just a little bit on the neck, and how do I start making sense of what's going on there? Okay, hopefully you can see that right here the hair is growing upwards. And here, the hair is growing downwards. So it's like two waves coming together right, right here. Now, what I wanna do, is this is another one of those transition areas where if you just use your thinners, the coat will get softer and it'll get harder and harder to have color and harder and harder to pull. So I start out by pulling what's long, either with my fingers or gently with a knife. This hair is a little finer, so it can break a little more easily if you're not confident about whether you break hair or not. Use a stone, use a tool with no edge. Make sure you don't cut the coat. And now I've almost got this hair strip that's going, that's aiming downward. And then whatever's left will be what's aiming upward. And that's more what I wanna, what I'm gonna wanna put my thinners to. Okay, let's see. So yeah, you should be able to see this is all going this way. This is going this way. So I'm gonna take my thinning shears. And I could clipper this, but I'm not sure exactly where that line is yet. And I'm, I'm more precise with the thinners than I am with the clippers. You know, once you get them in show condition, once you, you get everything set, you can just maintain what you have. But when you're setting it for the first time, be conservative. And then that reveals a little bit more that I can strip. So that new new hard coat's gonna be coming out there. Again, this is a place where, you know, if you have some attention to detail, your final product looks nicer. And as an owner handler, effort counts. The judge may recognize that you're not the most polished handler yet, but they can tell from your grooming how much you're trying to learn, how much you're putting into it. Okay, now you can see, 
He's got this nice, he's coming down here on the neck and then his shoulders kind of bulge out right here. You really want that to be as close to a flat line, a flat plane as you can down the neck. And so a couple things we're gonna do there. I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull whatever's long enough. Not up here. That'll just make this tighter, which will just make this bulgier. So two things to get rid of that bulge. Make sure you're not stripping too much above it because then you make a situation you just can't fix. You want where the bulge is to be the tight part. You might even have to grow some of this neck hair in right here, right here, in order to make it blend well with getting your, your shoulder nice and tight. Okay. I'm going a little faster than I normally would for this because I, I got a low battery message and I'm trying to get through this part before it ends. Okay, so that's the shoulder. That's the that bulgy spot. It's better. It's not all gone. It's better. Now, if you're if your coat doesn't have layers, don't take all of it at one time. Because ultimately, if you take it all at one time, A, you'll have a bald spot, and B, it'll all grow back in at the same time, and you'll have a worse problem. Now there's, in this area, the next thing you can do is you can card the undercoat out, and that will also flatten it. So I like to add some ear powder right there, make it nice and grippy. And you can use something like this fine stripper. I'm pulling in the direction, in the lay of the coat. And I'm getting a little undercoat. Not a ton, but take a ton to make a difference. Again, don't come up here. Don't dig into the, <coughs> into the hollow above the bulgy spot or you can't make the bulgy spot go away. You can't make the bulgy spot go away if you are making the area above it tighter. Okay, you can also use a ferminator for this part. And what I'm doing is I'm grasping the hair, the skin and pulling it upwards. I've actually got some of this neck in on this hand gathered up this way. So I made a nice flat surface. I'm visualizing where, where the bulgy spot is and then I pull it up to where it's easier. Let me get some of that undercoat. Okay, and then let's see, let's look at that. From the angle I looked at it before. There, it's a little better. It's a little more like a one continuous surface going from the neck down right into the shoulders and into the leg. All right, now up here, now that I've pulled some of that, carded some of that undercoat, now that reveals some more longer hair in that area, in that bulgy spot that now I can pull that wasn't there. Well, it was there, but I couldn't really grip it because the undercoat was making it hard to get to. And it may not seem like, you know, how can it make a big difference? You just get this little bit of undercoat, but if you're carding in the right place, all right. Now, then, now that I've tightened that up, now I can work on this transition a little more because I'm only cutting the hair that's already been cut. At the top, I like to work downwards. Switch sides, get a little more flush. Okay. All right. 
So that's pretty good. Now he's got a little bulgy spot back here because his coat is ready to have a layer off all over. And so I'll be working on that some more. But just for now, that's, uh, that's some of your head grooming. Let's see, I'll just keep going until the battery runs out or I get done, whichever is first. So I trimmed a little bit of this bushy stuff in between. Now I'm gonna pull the hair forwards, the long hair forward, and uh, with my thinning scissors, I'm gonna blend this a little. And in a straight line, a plane, whoop, my hand's in the way again. There, that works a little better. There, there we go. Um, I want it to be a straight plane coming out. So I imagine like a plane of glass that's right in the place that I want to cut and that I'm only cutting on my side of it. Not his, not his head side of it. Okay, so that's, that's the beginning. Starting to get a little, little bit of being able to see his, his eyes. He's still got real young dog eyebrows, so I want to be pretty conservative because they're pretty sparse. And if I get too scissor happy there, they're going to be too short to grow back in properly for the show in a few weeks. For this side, I come around and I do it from, from behind. Same thing. I just visualize this, this plane as if it was laying against his cheekbone. So you don't want to cut at an angle this way. You don't want to cut at an angle this way. You, you want to be cutting exactly the same plane as the head. And we'll talk later about you know, finishing the face grooming. Like I said, rough draft. Now let me get a pair of straights. And here's how I trim. I trim the edges of the ear leather. You know, I use longer scissors. Those feel more awkward for some people. And I understand that. Um, some people like to use shorter scissors on the ears and that's fine. Just be aware that as a, as a lever, which is scissors or a lever mechanism, the amount of force that's on the tip of longer scissors is less than the force that's on the tips of shorter scissors. So you might be, you might or might not be less likely to cut on the, um, with the short scissors but you're more likely to cut worse. So weigh that however you will. Um, while I was still learning, I would take lots of little, little small cuts and I would just make sure that my finger and thumb were on the very edge of the ear leather so that, and, the, and rest the scissors against my finger and thumb. And that way I could never ever cut the dog. There you go. One other thing when you're using scissors, cultivate, I call it the, the noodle hand. You're only using as much force to hold them as it takes to, to just barely keep them in your hand. That way, if the scissors close on skin, you feel it right away and you just stop. But if you're cutting with your whole hand, cutting with your thumb, hard, opening and closing your hand, that's how you're generating a lot of pressure on the tips of the scissors, you know, that can cause a cut. So I want to avoid that. All right, let me find the brush I need for his beard. Brush everything forward. Get to see a little more idea. Now brushing the beard, it's deceptively tricky sometimes because they can hide the mats up in there. So I hold it up and I start at the back of the beard and little by little, I brush my way all the way forward. That way I see and feel if there's any, any mats hiding in there. And then the same, the same thing on the, on the mustache part is I hold it all in my hand 
And from the bottom up, I get a little more hair in each time I brush. And that way I know I've brushed the whole thing. Yep. Switch sides kind of frequently when I do heads. Okay. Yep, yep, great. And then grab a comb because that's how you find out if you actually brushed everything out. Is now that he's brushed, I take a comb, put a comb through all the long hair. Okay, so it looks like I can still take a little bit more off of this eyebrow. Be careful about the lower, lower lid hair getting up in your eyebrow, and then you can put a dent under there and you don't want to. So smooth that hair down into your hand so it's out of the way. Why you just gently shape. The line I like to use when I'm doing rough draft of the eyebrows, the angle, is I want to go from the corner of the eye to the same side corner of the nose. So I'm aiming the scissors as if they were long enough that they would just touch the tip of his nose. Stand up, buddy. So that's where I'm looking when I do the line. Some people advocate the other side of the nose, but I find that that makes my, my line too, makes the eyebrows too short. Okay. I use the thinners while I'm learning or while I'm shaping, because using your thinners, it's kind of like um, a, a pencil with an eraser, you know? You, you make a cut and you're, if you have one, you're like, oh, that wasn't the right place. Well, at least you didn't leave a hard line. But the straight scissors are a little bit like writing with ink. Okay. Now I don't worry about getting them super exactly right because uh, in the sh when I'm getting ready to show, I, I will do my final trimming on eyebrows with them prepared as if they're gonna, I'm gonna go in the ring. So maybe a little bit of hairspray to keep them going in the direction I want. Um, maybe blown out, not dirty. I will make sure that the inside corners of the eyes are, are trimmed up so he can see. Just be careful not to cut up into your eyebrow. You can really easily get into what's the longest part of your eyebrow by um, being too aggressive there. A little backhand scissoring coming from this way. Okay, then you would do the same thing on the other side, but I'm pretty sure I don't have enough battery for that. So let's take one more look at this side. Yeah, not too bad. This is a lot flatter than it was. I still feel some play in it, but this is about as tight as I can get it today without putting a hole in the coat. But in another two weeks, there will be some more stray flipping up hairs that I can pull. And given what I have here, the last little trick I might do, if I was getting ready to go in the ring and I still had this bulgy spot here more than I wanted, I might lightly comb up the hair on the neck so that it's puffier while this part's flatter. And then that can help do that even smoother. Why does that matter? Well, usually that bulge is worse if the shoulders are more upright. So it's a really easy way to look at engaged shoulders without even touching the dog. So it's a way that people by accident show their dogs as if they have worse shoulders than they do. Or um, if you know what you're doing, you can minimize the appearance of not as good shoulders. Shoulders 
good shoulder layback is kind of the holy grail in all breeds, including standard schnauzers. So, all right. So I hope that's helpful and gives you some insight. Give me some comments about what you couldn't see so that I can keep perfecting my recording technique and, um, you know, uh, leave me a message or a comment to let me know what other parts of um, hand stripping, grooming, show prep, ring prep, coat prep, whatever you want to know. And uh, I'll try to help, try to help show, you, show it to you. All right, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Wrigley. Oh, yeah. He's giving me ear lickies. Okay. Bye-bye.